here. Okay, so great. We're recording today's session. And Mark, are you there with me? Yes, I am. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just great. Yeah, so um, thanks for joining us, everyone. Today, uh, Mark's going to be taking us through uh, creative briefs and a little bit about how you can customize your printouts. I just want to go through a couple of slides here, or maybe not even two, maybe just one, to just talk a little bit about our agenda, and then I'll pass things over to Mark. Uh, so today, Mark's going to be walking us through building a creative brief or requirements gathering document from scratch in the FB system. We're going to learn a bit about how briefs can be used within your system and through the portal as well. Uh, we're going to do a little review of just how you can customize brief printouts and then hopefully uh, Mark will be able to show that show us how we can apply that to other printouts in the system as well. And Mark, I think you've said that you're going to keep it to, you know, just an hour and a half, two hours today or how long you think you're going to go? Um, you know, I was thinking maybe three hours. So oh, cool. Gonna, uh, cool. Going to try to keep it to uh, the 45 minutes that we that we allocate, but I always end up going somewhere around <laughs> 50, 50, 55. So okay. Okay. Um, and then I should say, or you can say as well, uh, that everyone, of course, is welcome to ask questions as we go, and then I'll be answering those, and then you'll be checking in with me throughout the process here. You got it. Excellent. All right. Well, what I'll do uh, in fine form here is make you the presenter, and then uh, whenever you're ready, just share your screen with us and get the show on the road. Okay, uh, I've selected to, to show my screen. Let's see here. Yeah, I see it. Okay, all right, awesome, awesome. Great, well, thanks everyone for joining in today. Uh, you know, as, as Emma mentioned, uh, what we're gonna be doing is, is focusing on custom, you know, creating and customizing briefs in the system, how they can be used in the different areas of the system, uh, and then uh, a good hefty amount focusing on the customization of printouts. Uh, so I'm gonna be showing how we can customize the printout of the brief, which is actually really straightforward and simple. And then I'm going to be showing how we can customize other printouts using the same methods. So I'm probably going to focus on invoices today, maybe estimates actually. I haven't decided yet. We'll figure it out at the time. You know what? Invoices. We're going to do invoices. Um, so we're going to customize an invoice printout and show all the different options. And what you're going to see there is going to be very applicable for all of the printouts of the system. So understanding how to customize one is going to allow you to understand how to customize them all. Um, so let's jump in and, uh, and get started here. Uh, right now we're looking at the dashboard of my demo version. Uh, if any of this looks completely foreign to you and you're wondering how I'm getting these awesome cool graph thingies, uh, you are able to customize your dashboard and you can go and create different customized dashboards and navigate back and forth between them at different times. Now you'll notice in my main, in my system's main navigation bar that I have an area here called briefs. Now an important thing to mention is that the terminology in, in the system is flexible. So you may have a different term for this. Uh, some of our clients will call this requests if it's primarily used as an intake from the client portal. Uh, so you may have a, a different term for this area than what we're using. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to be doing here is touching on the creation of the brief template. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing my uh, go-to meeting keeps on popping back up. Is that maybe because questions are coming in? Um, I don't think so. I was experiencing issues with go-to meeting earlier today, um, and uh, Jill is actually saying that you've been fading in and out. So I'm not sure if it's maybe um, a go-to meeting issue. Just it made me re-download some stuff earlier today. So I'm concerned that. Uh, go to meeting maybe acting up a little bit. Um, please, anyone who is experiencing the same issue as Jill regarding fade in and out, please uh, let me know. Oh, apparently I'm loud and clear. So, um, Mark, it okay. may be you. All right. Well, hopefully uh, I'm going to continue, but uh, hopefully it uh, works out just fine. As I said, if anybody is having problems hearing me, if I'm fading in and out, uh, just let us know and we'll do our best to see if we can fix that. Um, all right, so let's let's jump in here. So what we're going to be doing is, is custom, creating and customizing a brief template. Uh, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go into the admin section here. And under feature management, we're going to have the option to customize our job types. Now, I mentioned earlier that the terminology in the system is flexible. And the type, whether it's brief type, job type, request type, that term is customizable as well as many others in the system preferences. And I have my brief type labeled as job type. And I often do that because when you're looking at a brief being created in the client portal, job type makes more sense to the clients of agencies uh, as opposed to brief type. But whatever term you choose to use, if you prefer brief type, then that's what you'd see here. I'm going to select this. It's going to show me a list of some of my existing job slash brief types. And I have a couple that are active here, brochure, website, classic. 
I'm going to go ahead and choose to add a new one. So up at the top, in the far right corner, in the action buttons, I have a button that says new job type. Now the first page is pretty straightforward. You know, is this active? Yes, it is. Name, I'm going to call this Mark's Brief, for lack of better imagination, I suppose. Are we creating this from, a temp from scratch, or are we copying another template? So we can select from one of the other templates if we wish. In this case, I'm going to say we're creating it from scratch. Uh, we're then providing an overall description of the template itself. So this is the description of the template. What office is this then used in? Most of our clients are going to have one office. It's not really that applicable. If you want to have a default account executive fill in when this is selected, you do need to choose the office so that a list of the available account executives can fill in. So I want myself to be selected as the default account executive. Now, if you want to have multiple pages for the brief, then you can. And there's two pages that are available, each with an unlimited amount of questions that can be uh, included. You can choose which of these pages would be available in the client portal if you happen to be using it. So perhaps page one is available in the client portal and page two is not. It's for internal use. I'm then going to click next. We are, are, we are now into the actual customization of the brief itself. And this is a page that's been upgraded to be a bit easier to understand recently. It's pretty straightforward. Big button here, add a new question. Select that. We are then able to see the types of questions we're at, we're, that we're able to add. Now, I just want to mention that you know the purpose of the brief, oftentimes, is, is information gathering. And the information gathering could be, again, something that your client is submitting to the portal, or it could be for internal use. It could be for an existing job that's already open. It could be the starting point for a new piece of work. You know, how companies fit the brief into their workflow, I find varies quite a bit. And for some, it's the very first step that they, that they do, way before they would do an estimate. And for others, they'll add new briefs to jobs as new information comes in. So it's really just a, an information gathering document. We can then choose how do we want the information to be gathered. So what type of questions are we going to ask? Well, perhaps the first one, and I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on the, the point here, click here of these buttons, because it's pretty easy. I'm just going to add in a few. The first, thing, first one's going to be some explanatory text. Explanatory text is basically just some text that's going to appear at the top. And it's just going to say, you know, thank you for, or just, you know, thank you for your uh, information or for your request or whatever you want to call it. We then have the actual text. You know, this is the actual text that will appear. Excuse my typos which you can right click, but you have to get, oh, it actually came pretty close, sweet. Um, so I'm then going, I can then choose to save this question or save it and add a new one below it. I'm gonna add a new one below it. And this one is going to be paragraph text. Now I wanna ask somebody a question, I don't wanna give them a whole paragraph or a large text area to answer that question. And this question is gonna be, uh, you know, what is the overall message? And then we can make it required if we want to. Uh, we can enter um, some inline text, and we'll see what, where that appears. So please uh, provide as much detail as possible. And you'll notice that that's where this is going to appear. So here's the title, and then the inline help text, and then this is the field. We can also give it a default value. So this will fill in auto. We can also make it a required field. If we make it a required field, it'll be yellow, and they won't allow this. They won't be allowed to move forward, and it'll turn red if they try to. I'm going to add another question here. Uh, the next one is going to be. I'm going to give a few more examples. One is going to be a date field. Now you'll notice that there are some options for different types of fields. Now, website URL is only going to allow you to enter a website URL. You will not be able to move forward if it doesn't fit the website URL formula. Uh, you know, an email address is going to require an email address. Uh, you know, uh, uh, with that specific format. A date field is going to give you a calendar. Uh, so this might be, you know, when is the copy due? And then, you know, this is a date field. Maybe it's not required. Default value. We'll leave all that as it is. You'll notice the calendar here. Add in one more, or two more, actually. The next one is going to be some checkboxes. And when there's multiple options, and in fact, before I, I show that, with regards to multiple options, you'll notice that there's a list area. Checkboxes is for multiple selection, you select multiple things. Radio buttons is for the ability to select only one 
and you can see every option without having to click on it. Whereas a drop down is simply a drop down. You can only choose one and you can only see all the options when you select the drop down. I'm going to choose check boxes. I'm going to say, what is the target audience? And then you'll notice that I have option one, option two, option three. I can fill in what those options are, add as many as I want, and also choose which of them would be checked by default. We're going to do one more. And the next one that we're going to do is an example of a file upload. Now, the file uploads in Function Point in every other area of the system are uh, very nice. They're advanced. You can drag and drop as many files as you want, uh, as long as it's under the, the overall 50 meg uh, per file limit. Now, in the briefs, it's actually not as advanced as the other area of the system. You do need to upload each individual file one at a time if you're uploading it into the brief itself. So one thing that you might want to do if multiple files are required is add the ability to duplicate the question. So when I add duplicate control here, it allows me to duplicate the following field. And I'm going to call this, uh, you know, please upload files. And then I'm going to I'm going to give it a label. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's say, files. Now you'll notice it says duplicate the next files fields. That word file filled in there. This one might seem a little bit confusing, but it's going to make a lot more sense once I start to fill it out. I'm adding an option to duplicate the following field. And the following field is then going to be, of course, a file upload. And we're just going to call it file. And save that. So that's page one. I'm then going to move into page two before I do. Have any questions on anything so far? Hey, Mark, we haven't had any questions yet, but that's fine. I'm such a fan of this new brief page, and I hope everyone will find it to be really straightforward to use. It's definitely an improvement over uh, what we had in the past. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a lot easier to work with. You don't really have to see a preview on a separate area. It's showing you exactly what this is going to look like. Some text at the top, large text area, date field, check boxes, file upload with the option to duplicate the file upload. This is a really simple example. And I'm going to create another one, another page to this. And on the second page, I'm simply just going to add one question here. And uh, I'm just going to say this is for internal use. And save that. There we go. I'm going to now choose to finish with this job type, slash brief type. And there we go. It's now available. So I've created that new brief type in the system. Let's now take a look at how we can then go ahead and enter this and what it looks like on the other side. I'm going to show three ways. Just entering the brief internally, just by selecting Add Brief. I'm then going to show it from the portal. I'm also going to show the option to add it to a job. So first of all, I'm going to select to Add a Brief. And a lot of the information here is pretty straightforward, and a lot of it's not required. You know, what, what's the name? I'm going to call this uh, webinar example one. What is the type? Notice it says job type. This is the list of those different types of briefs that we had in the system because I prefer to call the field job type. If I want to call it brief type, that's fine. But if this field corresponds to your list of, of estimates slash job types in the system, which are may or may not, depending on your preference, then those two will be tied together. And if I were to choose Mark's brief, well, if there happens to be an estimate slash job type in the system called Mark's brief, then when I add a new job for this, that type is automatically going to fill in. If it's not, I can choose something else. Company name, this is for, let's say, our client, uh, North Shore Auto Group. Choose my main contact there, Paul Holder. If there's a budget, so if there's an, you know, if we're putting this in, in as our first step and maybe there's a budget for this job of $10,000, notice these are not required fields. Delivery dates, this will carry through into the estimate and job if we should want wanted to do so. If it's related to an existing project, an existing estimate, compensation, you know, how are we going to be paid for this if we want to fill that in. Uh, we have the overall description there, and this will become the estimate slash job description. Click Save and Next, and it brings us into the actual brief itself. Now, this is a really simple one. There's not a lot of data here, uh, but you'll notice that this is the one that we just created. So thank you for your information. This is the actual text that will appear. This is the large required text area with a title and a description. This is the information I asked to autofill. If I were to take that out of there, notice the field is yellow because I made it required. 
If I try to move forward, it'll say, sorry, didn't fill in a required field, turns the field red, I must enter data here. Uh, we then have our date field with our calendar. We have our checkboxes with our multiple options. We then have the file upload. Now notice that it's not a drag and drop here. I need to choose my file. So I'm maybe go, you know, I'll go to my to my desktop and, and you know grab a file off there. But if I need to upload more files, then I can duplicate that field and put in as many as I want. I was actually noticing as I was testing this out earlier, I was creating a brief and I created two different duplicate options. And the first one was work well, the first one wasn't working, but the second one was. I thought maybe it was because of the field type. But I'm noticing here that it's actually the first one isn't working for me here as well. So I'm not I'm not quite sure. It looks like there might be a bug with that duplicate option. So we'll look at that after the webinar, but it actually should be duplicating that field. It looks as though the first one isn't and the second one is based on some testing I did earlier. So I do apologize about that, but the whole concept is is that this will duplicate the next, in this case, files field. Selecting it will provide us with additional file uploads. Uh, click Save and Next. Brings us to the next page. It just had a you know, large text area. And that's the creation of the brief itself, you know, filling in the data uh, that was based on the questions asked in the template. Notice that we have page one and page two, each with you know, the question that was asked and the information that was provided, including our file upload there. Now from here, if this is the first step, you know, if you haven't, if you don't have an estimate or a job or a project yet, you'll notice up at the top in the action buttons, we have a button that says add estimate. If we select this, it'll bring all the information into the estimate, including the name, the type, if there was a matching type called Mark's Brief, the company contact, the AE, the delivery date, the description, all this information fills in automatically from the brief. That's the concept of adding a brief as the first step in adding an estimate to that brief. The next thing we're gonna be taking a look at is adding the same brief from the client portal and how it looks there. Uh, Emma, I just wanna check in any questions before we look at adding the brief from the portal? Uh, no, I think we're okay, Mark, and I will test out that duplicate field thing um, once we're off the session to make sure we can get that functioning for everybody because it can be a useful one just as you described it. Yeah, definitely. So let's take a look at the client portal here. I'm gonna jump back to our dashboard maybe. And here's an example of the client portal. Now this, of course, would have your own banner on the top as opposed to ours. I have the background of that banner being white. Uh, you can put in any HTML color code, so you can blend that top section. The background, of course, would be your own as well, and this could be either an image uh, with a border or checkering itself, as I have happening here, if we get far enough. Uh, or you could have just an HTML color code if you want it to be a solid color in the background. So there's some options there. Working with this is really simple. Active workers show them a list of all the jobs that they specifically are a contact on. If they're not a contact on a job, they cannot see it in a list. The request is where they're filling in the brief forms, or in this case, I've preferred to call it job type. And this is the reason I've called it job type. I find that a lot of agencies have said their clients understand job type better than they understand brief type, so I've called it job type. Uh, request name, let's call this portal request. Select our type, we're gonna choose our marks brief again. Uh, I know all these other fields are optional, delivery date, uh, budget if it's applicable, um, but we'll say maybe you know, $5,000 here so as an example. Uh, of course, we have the overall description. Click Save and Next, and we're gonna see the exact same thing that we saw before. It's just in the portal. Some text up at the top, a large text area, title, description, autofill if you'd like it to. This field is expandable, so we can include more detail here as much as we need. Notice the asterisk letting us know it's a required field. If I were to blank it out and try to move forward, it would tell me no and show me the field. Uh, when's the copy due? And what are the multiple options? Duplicate the file. I was actually expecting that to work in the portal there, but it looks as though that first duplicate option isn't working for us. So as Emma said, we'll take a look at that. But they can then choose to save this as a draft or clicking Save and Next will then give them a summary. And the reason we're going right to a summary is because we didn't allow the client to see page two in the portal. Page two is for internal use, page one is for client use. So they're able to see then, you know, each question that was asked and the information that they've provided, click Submit Request, and it is then submitted internally. Now that request, if you have your alerts set up to do so, 
you know, the system will alert you and notify you of that. And I actually had some new alerts just pop in there about that right now. I could also, of course, just do a brief find and pull it up on our list. And I can see here's our portal request. You know, I can see the company is North Shore Auto Group. I can see it's Mark's brief. Uh, you know, Mark, myself, the AE, our key contact, Paul Holder, uh, you know, 31st of August here, and it's a $5,000 budget. If I select this, then it will show me the details, and I can choose to add estimate. Now, I'm not going to get into this right now, but you can then submit that estimate back to the portal, and you can have your clients be notified of that. They can then approve or decline and add a note about the estimate that you've submitted to them, and you can control exactly the level of detail uh, that uh, they might be seeing there. So that is submitting the brief from the portal. The process internally is really the same. It's, it's just that it's being submitted by the client. The next thing I'd like to show really quickly is just the concept of adding a brief to an existing job. Uh, just checking in. Have any questions before I do that? Hey, Mark. I think we're doing great so far, but thanks for checking in. Okay, no problem. I'm going to add a brief to an existing job really quickly, and then from there I'm going to jump right into the printout customizations. So if I were to navigate to a job here, I'm going to look at a job called dealership signage. From this job, let's say I wanted to add a brief. Now you can add an unlimited amount of briefs to any job uh, any time that you'd like. So if there's new information being gathered at any time, briefs are a really good way to do that because it allows you to structure the fields and choose which ones are required. So if you get halfway through a job and you need your staff people to be filling in some new information based on some sort of scope of work change, or just maybe it was based on something that was planned initially, but you knew that you weren't going to have the information until halfway through the job. You can easily go in and add a brief to any job at any time, fill out the fields that you've structured and the order that you've placed them with the requirements that you've put in, and then that information will then be available from the job's details page at any time. So if I go to an existing job, I can add a brief. A lot of the information will fill in, the name, the company, the contact. All I need to, choose, do, need to do is choose my brief type. Maybe in this case, I'm going to choose one called brochure instead of the one we've been looking at here. Click Save and Next. And then just another example, you know, a large required text area, uh, radio buttons for single options, check boxes for multiple. I have multiple pages to this one as well, so there's some other text areas and you know, drop downs and uh, file uploads. Still kind of waiting for that. Oh, there, it duplicated in that, in that instance. So it might have been something to do with the way that I created that brief template, but again, we'll take a look at that. But it looks as though this is allowing us to duplicate that file upload as many times as we want. And I might, I can remove those. It's really up to me. It doesn't matter. Uh, I can then choose to click Save and Next, and this brief is now attached to the job. We're on the Briefs Details page. If I were to navigate back to the Jobs Details page, then I can see the brief in the tab. And depending on how you've set up your, uh, you know, your job jackets and your job printouts, you may have that brief showing up on the overall job printout, along with you know, the description, the schedule, uh, the contacts, the service groups and their descriptions. You know, all this information can fill in onto the job jacket if you wanted to, including that brief. So it's a really good way of showing all the information that's been captured. And on the topic of the printout, if we were to look at this brief, and in fact, I might actually even want to enter some more information for it, but let's not worry about that. If we choose to print this, this is then going to show me my PDF. Now, if I were to decide, well, I want this to look a little bit different, you know, I want to customize what's being shown here. The options for customizing the brief printout are pretty basic. There isn't really a whole lot that you'd expect to be done with it. But the options for customizing some of the other printouts, like estimates and invoices and things like that, are quite extensive. And I'm going to show both. So what we're going to do from here is, in fact, I guess I should check in real quick. Emma, any other questions on the job, uh, you know, adding briefs to the job at all? Um, I think we're OK for now, Mark, but I will definitely keep you posted. Sounds good. Um, so if we go into. Uh, the admin section here, we're going to find an area under system setup called printing preferences. Now I'm going to show you two. I'm going to show the concept of customizing the brief printout. I'm also going to show customizing the invoice printout. But the process for doing both is really pretty much the same. 
when you get to the printing preferences page, you're going to find what we call standard printouts. These are all the default printouts that the system has. So, you know, a default printout for a brief. We then have my printouts. And I have three of them. I have three different types of estimates that I've created and customized for myself. I want to add in a new custom brief printout. I'm going to select to add printout. And we're going to call this, um, we're going to call this marks brief. Choose our type. This, of course, is a brief printout. Well, I'm going to click Save and Next. And this is a, a really simple example. We're going to look at a more detailed example in just a bit. But this is a really easy, simple example of how you can customize uh, a, a printout in the system. It's going to break it down into the different sections that exist on the printout. So first, there's the header. Do you want your logo to show? Do you want the client address to show? Do you want the office address? Do you want to change the title? Instead of brief, do you want something else? Do you want it to be called request? Notice that it changes to request up at the top right corner. So whatever you know, you want, the information that you want here. I can then go into the next area, into the details. What do we want to show here? You know, do we want the details? So you'll notice it has name and job and company and contact and all these different things. Do I want this to repeat on each page? I'm actually, I, I think that I do. I want the name, I want the job, the due date. Maybe I don't need the budget. I don't need this compensation thing. I don't need cost center. Uh, brief type, let's include that. Description, yes. Contact, let's keep that too. I can then replace or rename some of the terminology. So maybe instead of budgets, I want, um, well, I can't really think of another term for it, but let's just call it you know, dollars. And I actually took that out, but uh, throw that in there. And then we have a field called dollars. So you can replace the terminology if you wish and choose what is showing and what isn't. We can then get into the questions. And there's some, some neat options here too. There's things like, you know, do you want the labels to be on a separate line or not? So it, it completely changes the format of that brief. You know, do we want to show a divider for each question? Do I want a line between each question? Notice how the preview is showing you exactly what this is going to look like. I'm going to say, I'm going to say I do want that question divider. And then do I want a label for the page, you know, question one? I'm going to say no, I don't want that. And then question, maybe I want to call this you know, details instead of question. So that's why I'm able to go in and customize the, the fields and the values and what's showing and what isn't. Select approve and publish, and that is our printout created. Now, a really important thing to note is that the first time you create a printout for something that you haven't created a printout before, so in this case, a brief, it's going to override and overwrite the default printout. The default printout no longer exists. It's gone. This is now the only printout that exists. If I wanted multiple printouts to be selected, I would then go in and choose to add another printout and add another brief printout that I can then select from. I can also choose, is this available in the client portal? And what that means is that if I select this, then this will be the printout that the client is going to see in the client portal when they choose to print a brief that they've submitted or you've submitted. This is the solid printout they'll see. If I were to then navigate back to our brief and print it off, then you'll notice a slight difference and it really, you know, it's the lines that are showing uh, so we can you know, see that information. So there's, there's some differences that we've made based on what we wanted to see. In fact, actually, I think I kind of like the lines. It really helps to show that these are separate things. So that's a, a really simple way of customizing the, the brief printout. Uh, and that, you know, again, there's a few different options there. So you can have you know, some that are giving different labels than others, maybe uh, an internal version and, and a client-facing version. The next thing I'm going to get into is going to be customizing the invoice printout. And that's going to be uh, quite a bit more detailed with quite a few different options there. And this isn't just specific to invoices. It also relates directly to estimates. There's also some things to do with timesheets and other areas as well. Um, any any questions that we should touch on before I go into that, Emma? Hey, Mark. No, I think we're doing great uh, getting some positive feedback here. And you are doing amazing on time. Look at you. I know, right? <laughs> well, I'm flying through it. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so first of all, let, let me show you an invoice. Let's go to one I created earlier. And, and produce this, this printout. 
So this is the default printout of the system. And let's just take a look at what's here. We have a logo, we have the word invoice, we have the invoice number, we have some details about you know, the title of the job and if it's related to a project, the description. We have here then the service group and its description. And we have the individual service lines and their values. Let's say I want I want two different options available. The first option, I want to see more information. I want to see a total of the service group. I want to see each of each of these line items and also subtotals of those line items. But then I also want another option that's showing just the service group and its and its information, and maybe even a third that's a combination of, of, of the of the two. So what I would do here in order to accomplish this is I'd go back into my printing preferences. And I'm going to choose to add a printout. And I'm going to touch on the brand template in just a bit and what that means. But for now, I just want to add in a printout. So I'm just going to add a printout. I'm going to call this standard invoice. I'm going to select a, in, uh, a type of invoice single. So it's just a single invoice printout. Click Save and Next. Notice that the options for invoices are quite a bit more extensive than a brief. So the header, do we want the logo, yes, company name, all this stuff, all this looks good. So I'm not going to change any of that. Notice the different styles, the different structures that we can select from. So we can go through and, and select these different styles that are available. Summary, pretty basic. You know, do I want the date? Do I want the title? Uh, do I want to change the word from title to something else? Or do I want to change you know, the word description to something else? You know, maybe scope. You know, do I want to show all this information? And in this case, I'm going to say this this default setup looks fine. The invoice details. This is the the meat of it. This is the important part. You know, do I want to show hours? I'm going to say in this case no. I'm going to make this one the detailed one. I want name, description, and total for everything. In fact, let's take out service description. I don't need the service description, but I do want its total and name or the expense description. But I want the names and totals there. So all that looks pretty good. All of this other stuff here is all related to reports. Do you want these, these reports to automatically show up on the invoice as items that would be amended to the invoice? They're defaulted to be selected. We've had some debate internally about if they should be defaulted to be unselected, and that's probably a change that we're going to make. But if you don't want these reports to show up on the invoice, you just choose to deselect those different reports. Click Approve and Publish. I now have my invoice. If we were to go back to my invoice, we're only going to have one print option because it overwrote the existing. And we're going to find now that we have totals at both the service group and also sub values at the services. But I didn't include the service description. Now let's say that I want a, another one. And in this one, I just want the categories. But there's something more important than that. I want a different background. Maybe I have some contract terms or some sort of you know, information that I want to show on page three. And I want it to be formatted. I want it to maybe have some images. I want it to have some graphics. And I, this isn't something I'm going to customize on the fly all the time. It's just a, a standard document that I want to show up on the back of every invoice or the front or wherever. The way that we do that is by creating a what we call a brand template. And a brand template. This isn't the one I want here. A brand template is a PDF with a background that you want to show up on the document. And I have one here that has a you know, logo and has some graphics at the bottom. And then it has a terms and conditions page. And this isn't Latin. It's, it's just gibberish. It's just randomly generated text. But this is what I want my invoice to look like. I want a, I want a logo here that's different from my system logo. I want the body of the invoice to show up on this page. And I want this text or graphics or watermarks or images or whatever it may be to show up automatically at the end of the invoice that I'm creating. So I have this PDF. It's all ready to go. What I'm going to do now is go into my printing preferences again. And I'm going to select my brand templates and choose to add a brand template. I'm going to call this contract terms. I guess invoice terms would be better, more applicable, but it doesn't matter. I'm then going to choose my PDF. It was on my desktop. It was called 
mark PDF, I think. There we are. Open it up. Click Save. And now there's some options for this brand template. So first of all, where is the content going to show? This box is showing me where the content is going to show here. So first of all, I don't want it covering the logo, so I'm going to bring that down a bit. Second of all, the graphics at the bottom, I'm going to bring that up. Now, if there was a watermark in the middle, I probably wouldn't care about the content showing over the watermark. That's fine. Where do I want the page number? This little green box is where I want the page number to show. Maybe I want it in line with the content. Let's move it over a little bit. I'm then going to choose where do I want the content to start and where do I want it to end. Now, the second page of this is all of those terms. I don't want content showing on that. So I'm going to make my content start on page one and end on page one. Now, a common question is, well, what if the invoice has two pages of detail? If that's the case, the system is automatically going to add an additional page in the middle. It's not going to just stop and cut off and no longer exist with the extra content. It'll, it'll create additional pages in the middle to put that content. But as far as the brand template is concerned, I don't want any content showing on this page. I can then adjust some margins and things like that. Uh, select Approve and Publish. And the brand template is now available. So to add it in the brand template, if I go back to my printouts and choose to add in another printout, we're going to call this, uh, let's call it Terms Invoice. Select my type of Invoice Single. Choose my brand template. I want my contract terms brand template. Save that. Now, first things first, my new brand template has a logo, so I don't need a logo on this. Take that off. Everything else is good. I mean, maybe my brand template already had the invoice stuff. I could take that off too, but I'm just going to take off the logo. And I'm going to go to the details. I'm going to say, well, I just want the service group info. I don't want any of the services to be shown. I'm going to take all that off. And then I might, you know, maybe choose to include some reports. In this case, no. I'm taking off all the reports. Click Approve and Publish. And then let's actually add in one more real quick. I'm going to add in another printout real quick. We're going to call this, we're going to call this another invoice. And I'm going to plow through this really quickly here. Invoice single. No brand template in this case. And this one, I want to show the services, service groups, description total. I want the services, but I don't want their descriptions or their totals. Approve and publish. And notice again, I'm sticking with the same layout here, but there's a bunch of different layouts and styles for a lot of these things. Uh, approve and publish that. And now when we go back to our invoice, what we're going to find is the button that says print now has a drop down arrow. And there's three different options. There's our standard invoice. There's the standard. There is the another invoice option. So the logo and it had the services, but it didn't have their values, the values at the service group level. We then have our terms invoice. And the terms invoice has my, my image at the top, it has my graphics at the bottom, and it has my terms and conditions at the end. And again, if this content here had have spread into another page, then I would have gotten an extra page before this content was included. Any questions on any of the printout stuff, the brand templates, any of that jazz? Uh, no, I got a question in from Jill that I'm going to take offline. Uh, so thanks for that, Jill. But no, that looks really good. I like your brand template. That's great. Yeah, well, it was actually uh, Karen that made that for me a little oh. while back for a uh, previous webinar. Very nice. Um, you know, so I mean, that is really everything that uh, that we wanted to review. Um, you know, a few other things, and I kind of mentioned this already, but but customizing those printouts is is pretty. Uh, um, you know, flexible when it comes to things like estimates and invoices. So I'd recommend playing around with it. You know, if, if you want to know what the different options are, just simply go into the printing preferences uh, and then choose to add a printout, and then just kind of you know check it out and, and see you know, what what they look like. And uh, you know, you you might like some of the different styles. You might just like the default. But there's a lot of options. There's a lot of really neat things that you can do. And you know, you'll notice here that there are a lot of different printouts. 
So there's you know expense, a variety of different expense structures, invoice structures, notes, schedules, tasks. There's a lot of different options for schedule printouts. You can really tweak and customize what you want to be showing on a schedule. Maybe it'll take the next four minutes to show that. You know, if I choose a detailed schedule printout, let's call this new schedule. This gives me a whole bunch of neat new things that I can do with the schedule. So, for example, you know, let's say, okay, well, column one, action. I want the task name. Great. Description. Sounds good. Start date and time. I don't need the time. I just want the start date. I want the due date, but not the due time. Who it's assigned from, maybe I don't need that. I'm going to take it out. Uh, you know, who it's assigned to, well, I want that. Do I want to show the related milestones? Say maybe I do. Uh, let's actually, maybe we'll change from milestone to status. And then estimated in actual hours. Maybe I don't want estimated in actual hours. Maybe this is something I intend to show to a client. So I'm going to have, uh, let's say, the milestone. And then column nine. Let's just take it out. I don't, I don't think, I mean, maybe I'll put it in priority, but I don't really want the client to see priority. So I'm going to take that out. And then do I want them separated by lines? I think that I do. I usually like the lines, but maybe not maybe not the vertical lines. Actually, yeah, you know what? Throw, throw the lines in there. Why not? So that all looks pretty good. Let's approve and publish this. Let's go to a job. Just going to choose our dealership signage job we're looking at here. I think it has a schedule. It does. So we can look at our schedule here. And then when I choose to print this, I need to choose which of the tasks I want to show. Well, right now I want everything. So let's show everything. And let's look at our new schedule printout. And there's our new schedule printout. So it's showing me just the information that I want to show and nothing else. Maybe I look at this and I say, okay, well, I don't need to show all these completed items and all the draft items. So I'm just going to take, I'm going to take this entire category out of here. I don't need this entire category. Get rid of it. Get rid of these, this completed item. I just want the in progress stuff. That looks better. Produce my client facing version or internal version, whatever you want to call it. And now I'm not seeing any of that completed or, or blocks. There's two I left there, but I could have taken those out if I wanted to. So, and there's a lot of options for customizing these, customizing these printouts, and a lot of agencies I've been speaking with haven't known this. And you know, sometimes I'll be showing them the different options in the back end for what you can do with these printouts. And uh, you know, it just it makes for such a huge improvement on the flexibility you have for the details being shown on, on these PDFs, whether it be internally uh, or client facing. So I definitely recommend checking it out. If you do have any questions, uh, you know, following up from this, um, you know, please uh, reach out to your standard contacts. If, you, if you're still kind of in the onboarding process, reach out to your onboarding consultant. Uh, if you're you know, past that, of course, you can reach out to our, our support team. Uh, if you have any questions or, uh, or, or concerns, or if you have any problems, let us know. Uh, and then, uh, you know, as far as this webinar, uh, ML, I'll, I'll leave it up to you to talk about the, the question stuff, but I, I think we'll probably leave it open for a little bit for uh, yeah. additional questions. Yeah, sure. Thanks for that, Mark. Um, yeah, we'll leave the webinar open for probably another five, ten minutes to see if people have additional questions and we'll stop chatting. Um, but I did record today's session, so that'll be posted to our What's New section uh, later today or tomorrow. And hopefully everyone, if you're looking for help in a documentation kind of way, uh, you'll be able to find that just by hovering over the question mark in your own system, going to help and training and finding documents that way. Uh, go to webinar. Uh, system will also be sending everyone who's attended today a follow-up message later today with links back to documents relating to what Mark's reviewed today. We do have documents that'll take you through creating each of those printout types, um, as well as all the other stuff you can do in the system. Um, something I did want to say, Mark, that uh, Jill had brought up uh, that was good to remind everyone of is that you can make as many of those custom my printouts as you like. There is a limit, though, to how many you can have enabled at one time. And Mark, if you mentioned it, I apologize if I missed it. So you can have up to three enabled at any one time. Um, there is the option to upgrade uh, for a small monthly fee if you would like to have more enabled at one time. But at any time when you create them, every time you hover over a print icon, you, you can have up to three different options to choose from there. Awesome. Uh, you know, one other thing I did want to mention as well, and if I uh, if I had forgotten, our uh, uh, marketing guru Jan would have would have been really mad because she made me promise to, to remember. Um, we we have a, a new program for referring a friend, uh, so just wanted to mention that. Uh, 
it, you know, it's on our website, uh, you know, functionreport.com slash refer dash a dash friend. Uh, and if you just type in, you know, if you literally just Google, you know, function point refer a friend, that's how I just found this page. Uh, but, uh, and, I, and I think that there's maybe something on the login page as well. Uh, but if you do refer a friend and they end up using function point, you know, we have a $200 uh, Visa card going to you. So uh, if you, you know, have any, any friends with other agencies that you think could benefit from the system or be interested in checking it out, uh, you know, there's $200 uh, waiting for anyone that refers an agency that happens to start using the program. So, um, you know, neat little thing there. I mean, 200 bucks. that's a pretty pretty sweet night out or, or maybe even two. Very nice. And um, we are doing the last one in this series, uh, same bat time, same bat channel, next week, uh, where Mark's going to be taking us through, I think it's all about alerts and a little bit about permissions. Is, yes? Does that ring a bell for you, Mark? You got it. Fantastic. Okay. Um, well, thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Mark. That was really, really uh, informative and you always speak so well about the products. So thanks for that. And uh, any questions, keep them coming or uh, follow up with us later if needs be. Uh, but thanks again, everyone. Hope everyone has a good rest of the day. Thanks, everyone.